If you've listened to any of my music masters, or you've watched pretty much most of the Real Home Recording videos, then you have heard the Ozone Maximizer in my chain. Here's how to use it. At the top left, we can choose from two viewing modes, Gain Reduction Trace or Spectrum Analyzer. By default, Gain Reduction Trace is on and it shows you anytime the limiter kicks in. On the left side, we have our different maximizer modes. New for Ozone 9 is IRC-LL, which stands for Intelligent Release Control Low Latency. And if you watch down here, because the Reaper displays how many samples are needed with the buffer, watch how it goes lower. So it goes down to 324 samples once I hit play. Compared to like 700 with the normal IRC1 mode. Speaking of which, the other modes are as follows. IRC1 is the original one. I believe it came out in Ozone 3. Don't quote me on that. IRC2 definitely came out with version 4 of Ozone. 2 is actually one that I use for a lot of mixes for many, many years. I never really liked IRC3 mode for some reason. I just stuck with 2 because it sounded good and it didn't use a lot of CPU. However, I believe it was version 7 that IRC4 mode was released and it was just marvelous sounding. It somehow adjusts the different parts of the frequency band so that it's transparent and you can really, really push it if you need to. But what I love about it is because I don't play the loudness war game, anytime my audio peaks over zero, it still sounds very transparent. It sounds louder, but it does not sound like I changed it. And for me, that's what it's all about. Now, if I want it to sound a little bit more with character, I can choose those options. But really, I'll typically use a bus compressor plug-in or actual hardware before I use Ozone's Maximizer. And with IRC4, we can choose between the classic mode, which does sound like it has a little bit of clipping, modern mode is more transparent and transient allows us to really, if we're pushing the audio to a super loud crushed signal, then that's usually the one to go with. I usually just keep it on modern again, because I do not play the loudness war game like other audio engineers do. So going back to IRC two mode, if you don't push it past like four decibels of gain reduction, it still sounds good. IRC three mode, you actually have different options. Pumping is the least aggressive mode, but unfortunately it does have pumping distortion slash artifacts, whatever you want to call them. Balance is the one that I normally would go with because the release behavior is constrained, as the user manual says, in a transparent way. Crisp mode is aggressive and it favors distortion over pumping. Clipping is the most aggressive mode. It does color your mix a little and distorts to achieve maximum loudness. Going down the list here, learn threshold. Now this is interesting. So what you do is you enable this and you let your audio play. What you can do is choose what your target loudness will be. And it's not in decibels, it's in luffs. Loudness units full scale. Different music streaming services such as Spotify, Google, Apple, whatever, have different loudness specifications. Now, from my understanding, negative 14 is kind of like the in-between setting that most of them go with. Some of them are a little bit louder, like negative 13. Some of them are a little bit lower at negative 16. So negative 14 as the default setting is not a bad target. And as you're playing your music, this threshold is automatically adjusted. This setting right here will automatically be adjusted. So you just let your track play from the beginning and the threshold control will be adjusted accordingly. But you should still up here 
set whether you want to have true peak on, which is really most important if you're doing broadcast because your broadcast people do not want anything over usually like negative one decibels. All right. And to see that. So in that case, you double click on this number right here or you can lower it, but I usually double click and just type in one. One is usually what I go for for broadcast. For music, you can go a little bit higher at 0 0.7, but that is your absolute ceiling for the maximum peak. Some people still go old school at negative 0 0.3 decibels. I think that's too close to zero, especially if you're going to be doing streaming or encoding to MP3 or any other lossy codec. So 0 0.7, you're usually in the clear at this one, but really one is even safer. And more and more as the years go on, I'm going with one, even with music. Now, if you're one of these mainstream mastering engineers, this is what they do. They set it to zero, it clips into the red, and they don't give a crap. <laughs> That's about it. Over on the right side, we can fine tune the already nice sounding maximizer controls. One thing I forgot to mention about True Peak, I don't like it because I think it adds like another kind of slight saturation that rounds off transients in a way that I don't like, like a softening effect. Some of you might not mind it, but I can hear it and I don't like it. On to the other controls again. I should mention that as you're adjusting any of these controls, you should be playing your audio and using your ears. The character slider, I will normally keep on the default setting of two, but the way it works is lower numbers are faster attack and release, and the higher numbers are slower attack and release. Again, you have to use your ears. It'll depend on the tempo of the song and other factors, but usually keeping it on two sounds good to me. Stereo independence modes. Again, I'll usually keep these on the default, but if for some reason maybe you want your mix to be wider and you don't care if things sound a little bit lopsided, then you can adjust this. So that at 100%, the left channel has no effect on the right channel and vice versa. The areas between, there's a little bit of Information transferring, for lack of a better word. 100% is where you're going to have that lopsided mix, potentially. 50%, your mix will probably sound wider, but you might have a lopsided mix. It just won't be as unnatural. And again, at 0%, both channels are limited at the same settings. And sounds more cohesive that way. The new setting... In Ozone 9 is that before this stereo independence control grouped both the transient and the sustain control together. And this is all about the limiter behavior. Once the signal goes over your threshold, how does it behave? It's essentially like a attack and release on a normal compressor. And if you want to make them different, you can click this button in the middle here. It unlinks them so we can have, you know, 80% on the transient and zero on the sustain. Again, it's all about how are the different channels reacting compared to one another. By default, again, they are linked. Over here on the far right side, we can choose what's called transient emphasis. Essentially, that means how much are transient shaped before they're limited. What that means in practice is if your drums or your percussion in general aren't popping through like they were before limiting, then try using this feature so that dynamic perception is preserved. Usually I have this off unless things sound not that natural, but again, I don't play the brick wall limiting game. So if you do have a customer, or maybe it's you, 
that wants a super loud sounding master, then you definitely should tweak this control. And again, just like other ozone modules, you can have different presets to get started, depending on what kind of sound you're going for. Just click this, your settings are automatically adjusted. As you can see, And that's about it guys, that's all I have for you in this video. If you enjoyed it and learned something, then please hit the like button. If not, then we're not friends anymore. Thanks for watching everybody, this has been Adam for RealHomeRecording.com.